Hi, I'm a game developer, and I'm going to recreate Japan's hardest game in 24 hours. I told myself I was never going to create a mobile game ever again, but here we are. Not one week after I launch my mobile game, I hear wind of this viral Japanese game that is taking the internet by storm. A few big streamers have covered this game, and since then everybody's been obsessed. It's called The Watermelon Game, and it seems like it's a twist on Tetris, but instead of blocks, you combine fruit. Combine small fruit to make bigger fruit until eventually you get to a watermelon. The game is over when the level fills up, but most players are just trying to shoot for the score of 3000. For how simple the concept is, it is surprisingly addicting. And when you get that sweet, sweet watermelon, oh, shiver, baby. <laughs> Let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna need is a theme. So fruit has already been done, and now there are at least 100 apps on the App Store that have just like the watermelon game, but in fruit format in various different ways. So let's do something different and fun. Is that a crow? What the f is that? Oh my god, it's like, it's a comedy of errors trying to film anything. Anything, oh my god. I need something that is going to be so unbelievably cute, but is in a broad category of things. And while that sounds like a simple task, it's very hard to find a category of things that are similar in type, but that are also similar in shape. And shape really matters, especially when you're working with these 2D type games. The shape is really important when it comes to 2D games in making the style of the game feel balanced. So I did a little brainstorming with the help of my friend ChatGPT, and here are some of the ideas that we came up with. While there's a lot of really good ideas in here, I ultimately ended up on the idea of planets. Because I think the gameplay works so well because the shapes are round. I worry that if I tamper with the shapes too much, it's going to throw off the appeal of the whole game. There is some wiggle room, but there's a reason why it works. Making the objects round adds a certain level of unpredictability when the objects fall, which makes it fun and addicting. It's high risk, high reward. It can be improved with skill, but it gives you the illusion of control. That, my friends, is the secret sauce when it comes to making great game design that this game has absolutely just nailed. I asked the Bing image generator to help me create some planets that are using the 2D kawaii art style. And while none of these images are really ready to use in-game, I can take these concepts, use my handy dandy Figma skills, and create some awesome artwork. But now, I have to actually make this work in practice, which is a different beast entirely. So let's do that. <laughs>
Okay. I'm still here. I'm still going. We still got a couple hours left of daylight. Hopefully I won't have to go in at nighttime too much on this project. Uh, let's jump into programming. First glance, this looks pretty simple. The biggest feature of this game is going to be the collisions of the planets. So each planet is going to need to have a unique tag. So if two planets with the same tag touch each other, I'll have to destroy both of those planets and then generate the next planet up in the list. It's your Holly here. It was not that simple. I added all of my planets into the game, gave them physics, and then created a script on each planet that would hold their own information and check for collision with other planets. So I created this script that on collision would destroy the other game object and spawn the next planet up in the list. However, uh, that did not work. I kept having this problem where the planets would just run up the entire level system and give you a sun, which is not great. I couldn't figure out why I was doing this, but then I realized that if I have a script on both planets that collide, it's going to do everything I tell it to do twice. So it was spawning two planets each time two of the same planet collided, causing the game to do whatever this is. So what I needed to do is destroy both objects and spawn only one new planet in its place. So even though I'm telling it to destroy the other game object, each of the game objects think that the other one should be destroyed and spawn a new planet creating an interesting case of who is the real Spider-Man. So I need to have a unique identifier on the instances of the planets in the scene or Unity will have no idea how to differentiate between my objects. I chose to use the instance ID because it should be unique and that did the trick. Beautiful, it works, but I have other problems. Then it's time for the dropper. I used some really shady code from ChatGPT and uh, it didn't do well. I ended up having to rewrite this several times and I'm honestly not sure at this point which recording is the latest so I wouldn't follow this code too closely. I will however post the entire project on my Patreon if you want to grab a copy there. But if you want to see a full in-depth tutorial, let me know. I've done this a little bit differently than the other videos that I've seen. The big difference being that all of the planets that you see on the screen have physics from the get-go but I'm choosing when to turn the gravity on and off depending on where it is. So when the game starts, I'm instantiating a random prefab on the dropper as a child object and on the right hand side of the screen as the item that's up next. Once the first planet is dropped, that object's gravity turns back on and is detached from the parent object so that its position won't continue to move with the dropper. Simultaneously, the item that is up next in the queue is brought over to the dropper's position and set as a child object, also without gravity turned on. I did put this in a coroutine that has a slight delay, because if you bring the object over before the other planet has fully dropped, it will knock the planet and the dropper out of alignment. I then reset the variables so that the planet that was in the queue is now the first up and a new random planet is now up next in the queue. Then the cycle repeats. The next thing I need to worry about is the score. I feel like the score should only go up every single time the planets can join, but I feel like the higher up in the chain the planet is, the higher the payoff should be, with the sun being the highest payoff of all. Also, if you have name ideas for this game, drop them in the comments because I really can't think of anything better than the sun game, <laughs> and I feel like that leaves a lot to be desired. This was slightly challenging because I'm destroying both of the objects that hold the logic that I need, so I need to grab the data from the planets before they destroy themselves and store them somewhere else. That's when I learned about singletons. I've definitely heard of these before, but wasn't entirely sure why people use them until I ran into this problem, where I needed a global piece of data that I could access easily from any script. Singletons are a hybrid between a class and an instance. So if you have something in your game that you're only going to use one instance of, but that you need logic on, for example, the score, you can create an instance of a class that you can then access very easily from across your game. Next up is ironing out some of the UI. Now I had some ideas for my previous exploration, but I really want to lean into that observatory celestial feel because, you know, this is a game about planets. I could go absolutely ham here, but I don't want the background and UI to distract from the gameplay, so I'm just going to add some slight improvements. I found some references for a couple of the star signs and traced over them. I thought this would be a cool graphic to add to the background. I want this to look like wallpaper, so that's the mood I'm going for here. And I really love the bubbles that the watermelon game uses for the UI, but I just feel like that doesn't fit in here. 
I was trying to figure out what could fit with the starry theme, but then I realized maybe the stars? Then I came up with the idea to have the UI fit into little windows like you were looking out into the night sky, and I love that idea. I love it especially for the up next cube because it looks like the planets are actually in the sky. I did the same thing for the score, but I tried to add some highlights here to make it look kind of like moon glow. I then had the idea to make the planet spawn off of a little crescent moon with a line, and the last thing I need to create is that little evolution guide, so I'm incorporating some of the gold elements from the frames here. I feel like there's always undertones of gold and bronze in observatories, so I think that's why this works. But I have forgotten that I have not made a game over screen or logic for that yet. I started out creating a trigger for it and created a simple script that would check for collision and display a game over screen after a certain amount of seconds, but this did not work because if you're trying to go fast and fill up the game with planets, it triggers that screen pretty easily because there's a constant influx of planets flowing through it. So I then realized that the logic needs to be on the planets instead of on the boundary. I just need to make sure that the planets are checking for collision with the top boundary instead of each other. And I then realized that if this logic is on all the planets that it's going to make my job a little bit easier for me at the end because if it's game over I can destroy all of the planets using the same script. So I took my old script, repurposed it, and put it on each of the planets. Then I wrote a new script that would go on another game object that would control turning the game over panel on and off. I turned it into a singleton so the planets could reference it. And that worked like a charm. Whew, that was a lot of work. And here, finally, is our final product. This has been so much fun. This is probably the most fun I've had making a video so far. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much for watching and let me know what you want to see in the next video.